Okay, then we have questions which are here, the structure questions. Okay, so structure questions pula, Emily's upper. So, Aisha, did you do this? I hope you did. Emily's, Emily's is mixed in the biological upper detergent, all right, to remove the starchy stain, okay. So, detergent, berkanji, betul. Alright. Lepas tu apa? Amylase. Amylase diperlukan untuk menghasilkan sirap fructosa digunakan sebagai pemanis ataupun sweetener in food and drinks. Alright. So, I hope you got it right as well. Protease. Protease is a enzyme that is mixed in the biological detergent to remove what stain? Protein stain. So, we makan... Uh, chicken KFC and the KFC stain is on your shirt but when you wash it that KFC smell is off your shirt the KFC chicken is no more in your shirt why because our detergents are made with enzymes okay so these enzymes break down these proteins so we don't have sedapnia yes so sorry but that is the situation okay so protein is used to tenderize needs okay cellulase cellulase found the manner right it's in plants right that's with something we don't have okay so we don't have cellulose or the cellulase enzyme okay we can eat cellulose through vegetables but we don't have cellulase enzyme to break it down to the final part right so cellulase is used to digest the cell walls of plants such as seaweed to make jelly so we make jellies using seaweed, right? Agar agar. So we use the cellulase enzyme. Zymase pula is yeast produce zymase to digest upper sugar into ethanol. Okay, you guys would have learned about fermentation. Kalau belum belajar, nanti akan belajar nanti, right? So how does yeast make uh, ethanol from using sugar? Is through the enzyme called Zymase, right? Lactase, lactose sugar. Lactase is used to produce lactose-free milk. Ada orang yang um, kalau minum banyak susu nanti sakit perut because badan orang tak ada lactase. So, we use this lactase to produce lactose-free milk. So, we use the enzyme to free the milk out of any lactose sugar. So, lactase digests the lactose into glucose and galactose sugars. Finally, we have pectinase. Pectinase is used to digest upper. Pectinase is used to digest pectin. Sama dalam nama, right? In plant cells, that's it. it helps to produce clear and more volume of fruit juice. Okay? So, we use it to make it juice out of, yes, pectin. Betul. Okay, akhirnya sekali, trypsin. Trypsin is used to dissolve blood. Blood apa? Trypsin is used to dissolve blood clot ataupun blood beku. Betul. So, this is what the homework I gave to from 4 by enzyme about last week. Lepas tu, I dah ajar dah kan? Meiosis, meiosis tu generally apa, macam mana. And I told you guys, it's going to be a bit confusing in the early stage. About chroma, chromosomes, alright. But take it slow. Okay, you can understand it. It's not a very complicated part. Pasal histone semua, ada ajar waktu um, uh, DNA itself, right? So now, we're going to look at what's haploid and diploid. We are going to go into chapter 6 of Mitosis, meiosis, trust me, it's awesome. Yes, it is. But it's also going to be a bit challenging for some people. All right, so haploid is N, diploid is 2N. Okay, so haploid topo, one copy of genetic material subdivided into chromosomes. Contohnya, gametes and sperm, cells and eggs, ataupun ovary. Okay, diploid ni, we call it as somatic cells, meaning all the other cells in your body Kecuali your sperm and uh, gamete cells lah, which is the sperm and the egg cells. So, two copies of genetic material subdivided into chromosomes. Nanti you can faham, apakah function haploid, di manakah proses apa akan kita pakai haploid, 
process apa diploid will be taking um, part in it right so this is homologous and non-homologous chromosomes so as you can see here diploid ni dia ada two n okay so table below provides a similar explanation about homologous chromosomes once you understand what's the meaning of homologous chromosome non-homologous chromosome is just the opposite way of it okay Besides that, I also include some diagrams to let you remember better. Okay. This is the diagrams I put for you guys. Homologous chromosomes. Chromosomes pair one from mother, one from ayah. Okay. So, apa akan jadi? Kita kan dapat DNA daripada dua mak bapak kita kan? Alright. So, we're getting uh, DNA from our parents, both of them. So, what we have is the chromosome pairs of X approximately the similar same length centromere position gene at the same position ataupun we call it loci lah right and staining pattern okay ni semua quite detail but it's all right you just need to understand that we're getting one from our daddy one from our mommy okay this is how we are passing through our genes so ni homologous chromosome as you can see in the gambar sister chromatids the two ending non-sister chromatid macam mana pula and non-homologous chromosome. So the blue color diagram is what we call non-homologous. Yellow color is what we call homologous. So nampak tak? Panjang dia macam mana and all. And sister chromatic macam mana, sister non-chromatic macam mana. So this is what we call um, for the diagrams. We're using the diagram to understand the terms. Okay. So a homologous pair of chromosomes. Gene for eye color, gene for enzyme A, Gene for cytochrome. Gene tu apa? Ingat lagi tak? Guys, what is gene? Gene is a genetic material, consists of DNA, okay. Hope form 4, remember, baru 2-3 weeks, I told you guys about that. Okay. So, genes are being transferred, right? Via cell division, via meiosis, okay. Now, you need to understand the difference between somatic vs gamete cells. Somatic ada cakap dah, all body cells except gametes, dia ada dua N. Gametes pula ada haplot, dia ada satu N je. So, these are the ohm cells and also the sperm cells. So, what is mitosis? Dah bagi tahu dah. Just a short recap. Mitosis is the division of nucleus to produce two daughter cells. The same number and same kind of chromosomes as parent cells. Contohnya. Mitosis tak perlukan DNA daripada parents kita semua. Okay. It's something we already had from the initial stage, right? It's like mitosis is happening, your skin is growing, right? Okay, that division of nucleus to produce two daughter cells. So, the kecil, skin kita kecil. Sekarang as we grow, same number and same kind of chromosomes of our parent cell, of our initial cell, is going to grow. So, mitosis occurs in somatic cells, all body cells except gametes. Okay, mitosis what for? To ensure the new cells are genetically identical to parents. For unicellular organisms, mitosis are a sexual reproduction. For multicellular is to replace dead or damaged cells or growth and development of organs by producing new cells. So this is how it works. Kalau unicellular, dia bukan multicellular macam kita kan? What are unicellulars? Back. Mm, but, uh, the bacteria, the small, small um, unicellular ones all, they carry out a sexual reproduction. Okay. For multicellulars, they carry out this mitosis to replace your dead cells due to, uh, okay, when you, when, when, um, some, when you burn your hand, okay, when you touch something really hot, your skin is burned, okay, they damage, can but after two, three days, ataupun you, you naik basikal, you jatuh, your skin chala or you're bleeding a bit. Okay, when you close it, your blood is clot and all, your skin is regenerating and new skin will be formed, right? 
right? So all of that is due to my talk says growth and development of organelles by producing new cells. Then the cell cycle. There are two major cell cycle interface in a mitotic phase. So we will call it G1 S phase, uh, G2 mitotic phase. So this might seem I'm going a bit fast, but don't worry, I'll be explaining in detail in a different diagram. Okay. So what you need to know is we call it PMAT. Okay. In PMAT, we have uh, before that cell cycle, kita the interface. Yeah? I will in detail go with you guys, no worries. So we have cell phases G1, G2, and cell growth differentiates by producing proteins, cytoplasmic organelles, S phase into synthesized DNA, forming sister chromatase, joint by centromere. Okay, so Nisma, I will detail explain no worries. Okay, so what I want to show you guys is the mitosis kita ada in part parts. Okay, two processes, mitosis and cytokinesis. There's four parts called prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Okay, prophase macam mana? Ha, macam ni. Then metaphase macam ni. Anaphase macam ni, telophase macam ni. Right. This is something I will teach you back and summarize paling akhir sekali. Ni I baru nak bagi guys intro right. Now let's go to the main presentation. Okay, I will present to you guys just like I present to form five kids just now. Okay. Be presenting a window of slides. Okay, so can you see? The slide now we have. This is how your cells look under uh, microscopes. Okay, nanti belajar tinggi tinggi, you guys will get a chance to look um, into cells in during your science lessons or biology. Okay, you continue in biology, in biotech, ke, apa yang masuk MRSM couple, you learn more detail about it, how the cell looks. And then we can, this is how legit how the cell looks, right? Plant cells and all, we'll be coloring the cells, dyeing the cells and all. Okay, so now chromosomes, okay? Chromosomes carry the genetic code containing all characters of the cells, right? Chromosomes are composed of chromatin, a complex of DNA and proteins. So, you can have by you have to draw a lot in this topic. What you need to understand is genetic code to DNA can. So I'll stop and carry this DNA. Inside the DNA, we have chromosomes, right? So they carry the genetic codes. It has all the characters of the cell. They much a blueprint of life out. Okay. And these are basically the hardware materials and software materials that I'm left out kita junto. Okay. So chromosomes are composed of chromatin, a complex of DNA and proteins. This is how the DNA is packed. Okay, I've been ajarkan. Histones, DNA double helix, macam mana, the coiling and condensing of DNA. Okay, so this is how a chromatin is made. Now, a level of chromosome structure. Awal-awal, kita tahu dah DNA helix macam mana, 2 nanometer. Lepas tu, kita tahu nucleosomes ada dalam nucleus kan? So, dengan histone, nucleosum, histones, we have around 11 nanometers, so it's growing, right? It's becoming much more larger, right? Now, called nucleosomes. So when it's called nucleosomes, what happens? It becomes a looped chromatin, and then it becomes a condensed chromatin because it will be condensed, and then finally it will be called as condensed chromosomes. This is how DNA, which is somewhat condensed, Okay, we are duplicating, we are we are looking at the level of the chromosome structure. So total extended length of a DNA in a human cell is nearly two meter. But this must be a fit into a nucleus with a diameter of only five to ten micrometer. Faham that statement here? But then kita punya DNA kan? 
dia hampir panjang 2 meter. That is why DNA is not visible. But when we carry out experiments nanti korang, if you're going to universities and all, you will see the color of DNA tau. Why? Because it's extremely long that it's visible to be to the naked eye. Of course, under under certain stains and all lah. But memang boleh nampak. Because that is how long the DNA, human DNA is. Kita, we always think the DNA can't be seen. But because it's so long, when we're carrying it out experiment, memang nampak. Okay? So, that being said, I hope you understand how long the DNA is. Now let's go to number of chromosomes. Humans, berapa chromosomes kita ada? By now, you should know that, especially from five kids, if you're joining, berapa number of chromosomes that humans have? Shamil, can you answer that? Shamil, is telling 28. Betul ke 28? Dua puluh lapan je ke kromosom badan kita? Twenty four je ke? Anyone else? What is the number of chromosomes in human body? Okay, Aisha says forty six. Very good, Aisha. So we have 23 pairs of chromosome. Okay, each cells normally contain 23 pairs for a total of 46, right? 22 of these pairs are called autosomes and two in somatic cells, right? Okay, the other one is called for basically for the gamut cells, lah, your ovary cell, then your testis, your sperm cell. Okay, we call it the sex chromosomes. All right, very good. You understand that. Shamel, did you forget about it or how? Huh? You're from five, right? I don't remember about that. Do revision. <laughs> okay. Never mind. So, in other words, it doesn't depend on the size of the organism, right? Sebab anjing lagi kecil daripada kita. But we only have 46, but it has 48 chromosomes. Shrimp is much more smaller. But it has 254. Turkey is 82. The two animals which are very similar to humans, which having the almost similar number of chromosomes is pig and monkey. Alright? That is why as I said, that, that tadi um, hati babi almost sama dengan hati manusia kan? <laughs> right? So the monkey's activities are almost similar to human activities as well. So we have shared some characteristics with other animals, but we can't take their belongings, meaning their chromosomes or their DNA and infuse with ourselves because we are very specific. So what is this chromosome? Apakah dia? Because this is what it means to have the DNA composition of it, right? So Edda's tongue has 1,260 largest number of chromosomes. So plants are very unique themselves as well. So we humans have only, as your friend said, 46. So kita ada 23 set of chromosomal pairs. Okay, so the human genome, okay, the total number of chromosomes in human is 23 homologous chromosomal pair. Centromere adalah the central part. So basta kita ada, we categorize it as the sister chromatids, the down two parts. A pair of homologous chromosome is when you have four sister chromatids, okay? And this is how your body punya um, chromosomes are looking at. So kita ada 1, 2, 3, 4, sampai 23, right? So 22 are called as autosomal chromosomes. 23 is called as sex chromosome, okay? So that is something you get one from your father, one from your mother as well. Now, homologous chromosome ni apa? This topic, again, banyak sangat new terms you will learn. Prepare for it. Take notes on the each term. You need to understand how this chromosome, chromatid, right? Homologous chromosome, sister chromatids, allele to upper everything, okay? 
So paired chromosomes from maternal and paternal sources, okay, you're going to get from your mother's side and then that side for initially stage, okay, control same inherited characters, homologous meaning same information. So homologous confirmation, macam ni, merah merah, biru biru. Okay, LL is the special characteristic trait. Why are chromosomes drawn in different color? Sebab chromosomes are either maternal or paternal origin. Paternal maksudnya daripada ayah. Maternal maksudnya daripada mama. Okay, so this is how it is formed in our body. Keeping cells are identical. So the instructions for making cells part are encoded in the DNA, right? So each new cell must get a complete set of DNA molecules so that they can replicate and grow their cells um, so that your body cells are damaged and all will repair macam tu lah. so the instructions are needed and encoded in the dna so all of these complete new cells of dna have these molecules now kita dah belajar dah pasal dna replication tapi i ulang balik supaya korang faham eh original dna strand macam mana lepas tu dia pecah jadi two new identical dna strands kenapa they perlu copy or replicate it before cell division Okay, because only then each of the cell will have its own identical copy. Each new cell will then have a new identical copy of the new, uh, the same DNA that's being replicated. So step one in cell division is DNA replication. Okay, parent cell, two identical daughter cells. Contohnya ni adalah cell uh, kulit, dia punya daughter cell pun cell kulit juga, right? Now, let's go to cell cycle. Ni I mentioned tadi. Pekat itu cell cycle. We have three main stages in cell cycle. Okay. What are the stages? Cell cycle. Stage one adalah. Okay. Here we say it as mitosis. Okay. The nuclear division. Lepas tu kita ada cytokinesis. Ataupun cytoplasm division. And then you will see gap one. Then in synthesis gap two. Okay. Then you look at interface, right? Interface is the growth of 90% of the time. This is how the cell punya growth cycle. Now, interface are the tiga subfaces. Okay. We call it G1, G2, G3 tadi. So we call it S phase. So G1 comes first. Basically, it's the growth phase number one. Okay. And then S phase is DNA synthesis phase. And then G2 adalah growth phase number 2. Macam tu je. Alright. So what happens in each subphase? Very simple. In G1, synthesis of proteins and RNA. Okay. RNA punya function ingat lagi tak? Guys, what is RNA's function? Mon think RNA function tu apa? Taught you guys this two weeks ago. Come on, let me know what is RNA function. Ribonucleic acid, right? So, apa kah itu? Should know the, the function of protein, RNA, DNA, semua kan? DNA, apa? Genetic code. So, RNA apa? So, RNA is basically the what it does, it synthesizes and replaces DNA, deoxy ribonucleic acid as a carrier of genetic codes in the body, right? So the main function of it is to carry information of amino acids to build the proteins, right? So this is done by messenger RNA, personal transport RNA. Ingat lagi tak? So remember that a single strand of DNA is a blueprint for the mRNA. 
which is transcribed from the DNA strand. So remember how it works. RNA ke, DNA ke protein, the process can ingat. Okay. So synthesis of proteins and RNA of the cells, and then GO2, meaning the cells that do not divide again and enter GO. Itu maksudnya the cells are at maximum stage already, cukup already. So they're not going to divide anymore. So once G1 is happening, after synthesis of proteins, RNA and all, that can masuk kepada synthesis. Synthesis is where sekarang DNA will be synthesized by the cells. And then synthesis and replication of organelles dalam cell. Organelles contoh macam mana? Apakah organelles? Man manusia, human, animal cell ada cell wall ke? So plants, right? So, need to know and answer correctly. So, replication of organelles such as apa? What we have? Mitochondria, lysosome, lagi apa? Nucleus, lagi apa? So, all of that synthesis and replication of organelles will be taking place in the G2 stage. And then comes mitosis. Okay, so three organelles replicate. Chlorophas dalam, apa, in plant cells, right? Okay, and then mitochondria and then centrioles. All right, so the length of cell cycle depends on the type of cell than an external factor. Berapa lama cell cycle ni? How long is it going to generate? We don't even realize our growth, right? So the type of cells, cells determines the cell cycle. Usually the more specialized the cell, the less likely it is to divide. Okay? Maksudnya, lagi lah complicated dia. Lagi, less likely it is to divide. Alright, so ribo RBC, what is RBC? Red blood cells are replaced at a rate of 2 to 3 million per second. So that's how fast they're being um, divided, all right? So external factors such as, tapi contoh nerve cells usually never divide. Sebab kenapa? Nerve cells ni, sekali ada, the damage rate pun kurang. Right? It's not going to be burst or whatsoever unless you're being, getting electric shock or whatsoever, right? Or having through aging process, maybe yes. So external factors that is going to affect the cell cycle is temperature, food and oxygen supply. Contohnya, kalau tak cukup oxygen, everyone mati. Your cells is not going to get, go through cellular respiration. So energy is not going to be formed. Cellular respiration process, ingat lagi tak? How are we going to make ATP? So I can't be questioning and stopping a lot. So please remember that and do not forget what is cellular respiration, important key points. I always repeat this because it's sangat penting. Okay. So temperature, how does temperature play a role? Let's look at plants. Kalau plants yang macam sunflower, you go and put it in a very cold place like Alaska, is it going to grow very well? No, because temperature is not suitable for it. Food, kalau you are starving for next one month, are you going to experience growth or repair of cell which is damaged by your body? Very unlikely. That is why it's important to eat healthy and grow continuously. Now, the cell cycle. Okay, this is how it works, right? G1, macam mana? Cell grows, carries out normal metabolism, organelles duplicate. Pas tu, step two, as phase, nine hours, DNA replicates, chromosomes are being duplicated. Ni yang DNA punya part lah. Pas tu, step three, cell grows and prepares for mitosis. Mitosis is PMAT lah. Alright, so PMAT tu apa? Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, ahenya ada cytokinesis. Okay. So mitosis is this four thing lah, piman. M phase is what we call as including the cytokinesis. Right. This our cal um, calculations all depends on the organelles and also the organs that is going through um, cell division. So you need to draw this. Okay. Make sure you learn how to draw this. G1 cells are being matured, DNA is copied at S phase. G2 cells prepare for division. M phase, ada ni semua. Mitotic phase, ada. P mat lah. The pro metaphase tu semua, um, I think boleh abaikan that's high level. Okay, you need to focus on pro phase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Okay, each of these phase, you can allocate cell division dia macam mana. Lepas phases ni habis, baru doctor cells are successfully 
replicator, duplicator. Okay. Cell divides into identical cells. Question. Suggest explanation for the following observation. Interface is not a static stage of cell cycle. Okay. Proteins and RNA are synthesized and DNA is replicated. Organelles are synthesized or replicated. Meaning, during during the process of inter interface, it's not a static stage, Max Sonia. It's not when it's going on, all the other cycles is not going on. Okay. It's something where when the proteins are in RNA is synthesized, the DNA juga is replicated and the organelles are synthesized or replicated juga. Okay. Now, this question is concerned with cell division. Give a brief description of cell cycle. Cell cycle topple. Nuclear division is followed by cytokinesis, which result in two cells. Each cell enter interface where proteins and RNA are synthesized during G1. Pas tu, kalau kita tanya cell cycle, simple je. You can kata pasal G1, G2, S phase, GO pun boleh juga. Alright? And you need to know what cytokinesis as well. Alright, then we have another question. Graph below illustrates how the quantity of DNA within a mammalian somatic cells varies during the different phases of cell cycle. Additionally, the graph shows two graph growth of phases G1, G2, which are separated by an intermediate phase called S phase. Okay, in terms of the graph, explain what is happening with the cell cycle during phase S. So S phase apa menjadi? It is synthesizing apa? DNA replicates. Each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. This is how you're supposed to answer. So B state one process other than cell growth which occurs during G1, G2. G, G2, it's preparing to go to mana, mitosis, right? So of course, cell tengah growing. And also organelles are synthesized or they are replicated. Now, cell divides for three reasons. One. Why are we carrying out cell division? Why is the human body carrying out cell division? Simple, for growth. Okay, so contohnya formation of bud in hydra. So hydra is a species, right? Okay, so it needs to grow, like, it's like a plant-like species. So it, for the formation of bud in hydra, for growth, cell division is occurred. The past to occur, to replace damaged cells. But that matter dia, it's painful. Right, he scratched his eyes with some bug. Makan his eyes, I don't know. The point is, it's damage. And uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to chabot our skin and replace the different skin? Are we human? Are we robots where tangan pata, we're going to replace the different hand? No, right? Our body is a biological system where it can repair the damaged cells via cell division. And... Last one, which is the second step here. Okay. To produce gametes or spores, salmon gametes are mixing ataupun nuco. Okay. So gametes and spores for upper to create offspring. Sharing DNA to create a offspring to um, increase your um, genetics towards uh, inheriting into a different species itself. Okay, so two types of cells in the body. First is non-reproductive ataupun dipanggil sebagai somatic cell. Okay, kedua adalah gametes ataupun spores. So somatic cells ni, macam saya beritahu tadi, we diploid number chromosome 2 and, okay, contohnya neurons dengan phagocyte. Phagocyte, tahu tak apa tu phagocyte? Some would have still remember, right? So haploid pula, spermatozoa, sperm cells. Pollen grains. Pollen grains is something from five students will learn in plant topics, right? So, we will, plants also go through this, microorganisms, humans, animals, everything. Life cycle of animals. Let's talk about humans. Haploid, dual protein chromosome, diploid, dual N. So, the total 46 of chromosomes, right? Now, gametes, male, females, fertilization, meiosis, haploid, diploid. Mature organisms I got. Okay, ni mungkin nampak very crazy. Let's take it slow by slow. Gametes dah diperitahu kan? Male gametes, female gametes macam mana? Alright. So, meiosis, fertilization semua. Okay, meiosis is a different process or totally. Okay, it is using the sex chromosomes. Right. 
So diploid tu is a different um, for the normal chromosome for mitosis. Okay, we are going to use haploid for upper. These gametes and uh, males and females, is sperm cell and ovary cell for meiosis. Then you carry out fertilization. Some pada part zygote, and then the zygote matures and have two n lah. So n satu n daripada ayah, satu n daripada mama, male female, anak dapat via fertilization and meiosis process. Zygote is the baby born with two ends already. So Therefore, it carries out the cycle of diploid with 2N. This is a life cycle of animals in general. Now, we have two types of nuclear division. Kan? By now, you should know mitosis dengan meiosis. Mitosis to upper. So, mitosis is the process which a cell nucleus device to produce two nuclei containing identical sets of chromosomes to the parent cell. So mitosis in root tip nampak. When we are enlarging it, kita nampak the pink thick region is the cell. Atas tu, if you take look into a, a leaf, memang tetap nampak. But we look into a microscope, you can see new cells are being formed. So mitosis macam ni lah. N pecah jadi 2N. Ataupun 2N pecah jadi 2N to N. This is replicating and duplicating. Right. Meiosis pula bukan macam tu. Okay. Mitosis, you, it divides to produce two daughter nuclei containing identical sets of chromosomes to the parent cell, right? But, kat sini ada two daughter cells je. Meiosis pula, you're going to get four daughter cells. How? Process by which a cell nucleus divides to produce four nuclei, each containing half the number of chromosomes of the original nucleus. So it's half. That's why we're doing it like this. It's also called the reduction of division. Okay, meiosis forms the ovum and spermatozoa in animals. All right, so dua n and the chuck for the dua cells from them, and each will be producing two daughter cells. Totally, you have around four daughter nuclei. This is how mitosis is. As you can see here, adela prophase, anaphase, telophase. Okay. Metaphase pun ada. So, this is how you look into a detailed um, zoom in into a cell cycle of a plant. Now, let's look in detail. Significance of mitosis, dah bagi tahu dah, growth, replace the endemic cells, regeneration and replacement of cells. Ni, planaria. It's a type of an organism. Macam lizard juga, potong dia punya ekor, it still grows, right? But what happens, can you potong the echo of a kucing and ex expect it to grow? No, because it depends on each cell differentiation and cell genes of the specific animal. Banyak animals macam ni, oxytoxin, lepas tu, eh, sorry, oxytoxin pula, that is different. There is an animal called, I'm not so sure the animal's name, it's called something dengan OX macam tu juga. Okay. So animals macam lizard ni semua, why can they grow back their um, tails? Because it regenerates, regenerates, right? So that is how um, some animals are growing lah, right? You cannot cut your jari and expect it to grow back, but your hair grows back, your nails grow back, so there are a lot of animal. Yes, the name is axilot. Okay, axilot is an animal. Ex, exo little they call it. Okay, so aquarium pet. Di mana dia memang comel, right? Why is rare and what they want is because it can. It's called the water dog lah. Dia punya um speciality is that they punya tangan kalau kau potong dia akan grow back. So that is his speciality. So some animals have that. Okay. We don't have that. Okay. Now what is the other side significance of mitosis is that it have a sexual reproduction in budding for yeast or for amoebas, for microorganisms. A single cell eukaryotes reproduce asexually. 
Kita punya simple multicellular eukaryotes reproduce asexually juga hydra via budding. Okay. Complex multicellular like us, we also carry out through mitosis. Animals in non-reproductive somatic cells, all cells in the body except reproductive cells. Okay. Plants, meristem cells, tip of root of shoot. Kenapa tak perlu in other parts? Bukan tak perlu. It's just that the plant punya process is get water from the roots, right? And also sunlight from the shoot. That is why meristematic cells are there dekat tip and the root of the plant. Now, as you can see there, nampak tak? The diagram is showing how much cells are being formed at the tip of it. See, this is mitosis. Now, let's look at in detail now. Centromere, centriole, centrosomes. Okay. Centromere tu is a point of constriction on the chromosome. It's like the tengah-tengah punya point, right? So we have kinetochor, kinetochor, spindle fiber. It's quite a uh, high level. Okay. What you need to know is we call it um, kinetic fibers. Okay. Or just call it spindle fibers lah. Right. So we have sister chromatids and the centromere region. Ni kena pandai lukis. You need to identify first, later you'll understand the function and how it is working on, okay? So, centrioles. Centrioles to upper. Pretty sure you have also learned this before. Centrioles are the organelles in the cytoplasm, only found in animal cell, absent in higher plants, and occurs in pairs, lie at right at each other, able to self-replicate, and mitotic center, centrosum, centrioles is the one which carries out the Muhammad Zakwan is just joining us. Okay, so it carries out the it assists in the prophase, metaphase, and anaphase, and telophase. All right, that's why you can see here G1, S, R, G2, and mitosis part. All right, so then we have we'll ha have to learn about centrosomes, our organelles located at the near nucleus are not membrane bound and serve as a mitotic center okay so it serves as the mitotic center in animals absent in plants okay centrosomes absent in plants divide and migrate to opposite poles of the cell during mitosis okay so this is how the it will look like in a general cell centromere attached decad kinetochore condensed chromosomes nuclear envelope other anti-nuclear envelope ni they can disintegrate, nak keluarkan chromosomes, separating chromosomes macam mana. Okay, ni semua rough brief idea je. Okay, I want you guys to kenalkan all of these important terms. Ambil nota. So when you learn the process each and one, right, it will be easy for you. Nanti waktu belajar pasal prophase ke metaphase, you tak pelik pula. Eh, apa tu spinal fiber? Apa tu centromeres? Up with the centrosomes. Okay, I don't want that. That is why you understand the terms first. Okay, so centrosomes are not centrioles, are responsible to assemble spindle fibers. Okay, so centrosomes is the two bullet in the far ends, you see. They're not centrioles, they're responsible to assemble the spindle fiber to help the prophase, metaphase, and aphase and telophase. Okay, the cell to carry out cell division. Spindle fiber pula. Formed during mitosis and meiosis, it arranges the chromosomes into their correct position in preparation for cell division. Now, spindle serves as a railroad track along which the chromosomes will move, framework keeping the two poles apart. Chromosomes are associated to mitotic spindle and chromosomes aligned at the cell equator, ni sister chromatic separation. Ni semua, um, dia punya process lah, right? Um, the prophase, and then middle one is um, telophase, and then ahenia is anaphase, macam tu lah. So this is how it will be done. No centrosomes and centrioles in higher plants. The spindle fiber originate from other mitotic center. Okay, so meaning plants that the centrosome and centrioles, yet they carry out mitotic cell division, macam mana? Because they get spindle fiber from other mitotic centers. So interface, a stage prior to mitosis. Okay, now we are looking back at the whole cell division. Interface macam mana? Plant cell macam mana? Animal cell macam mana, right?
Okay, so over here, interface you can see is prior to my mitosis. Each chromosome now exists as a pair of chromatids joined together by a centromere. So this is how interface looks like, sister chromatids, centromere di tengah, chromosomes duplication happens and become sister chromatids. So guys, I haven't gone into detail, but I've already explained to you guys regarding the important terms, and I hope you already identify it by now. So we will be continuing this topic next week. I'm suggesting around three weeks to complete this whole topic. Then meiosis, and then banyak lagi lah, right? So no homework, do your latihan, uh, do your revision, understand the concept, Right, that is what's most important. So please do revision. So next time.